Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, would you please rise for the playing of honors to Major General Page and remain standing for honors to our nation.
Bergeron 07 was sent to serve in Vietnam immediately after its manufacture. Upon its completion of service in that conflict, 007 flew in support of the Mohawk Aircraft Qualification Force at Fort Rucker, Alabama. It was in this location that many new Mohawk pilots would receive their first flight in the aircraft. After faithful service at Fort Rucker, 007 was transferred to the 184th Military Intelligence Company in Fort Lewis, Washington. The aircraft's temporary duty was not long, and soon 007 was on its journey halfway around the world. This time, 007 found itself in the 73rd Military Intelligence Company in Stuttgart, Germany. At this location, 007 flew numerous hours in support of a very critical military intelligence border mission. There, it monitored the forces of our Cold War adversaries. After serving a decade in Germany, 007 was ready for a systems upgrade by the car brand of the Grumman Corporation as the aircraft was en route to its new home in Fort Hood, Texas. During 007's tenure at Fort Hood, it led the 15th Military Intelligence Battalion to Southwest Asia and served in both Desert Shield and Desert Storm. This is just a brief history of one of hundreds of Mohawks which have served our country, each with its own story to tell. Many men and women involved with the aircraft also have a story to tell when it comes to the Mohawk. As I conclude this tracing of the history of aircraft 007, it leaves me with one thought. That is, this ceremony not only marks the end of this aircraft's service, but the beginning of its legacy. At this time, I would like to introduce the commander of the 504th Military Intelligence Brigade, Colonel Richard E. Allenbaugh. I am honored, privileged, and thrilled to introduce our guest speaker for today's ceremony. No one in the U.S. Army better represents, knows, admires, and loves the Mohawk aircraft than more than Major General William C. Page, Jr. He told me that the Mohawks never let him down during his 1,763 hour flying hours in the Mohawk. He is rated in all four models, the OV-1 Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta. We're also pleased to have Mrs. Gail Page and her children here with us today. Mrs. Page, who represents the perfect Army wife, also has a great appreciation for what the Mohawk means to Major General Page. Early in his Army career, she noticed a special sparkle in his eye whenever he was around the OV-1. Rather than compete, she gave him the proper title of the Mohawk Kid, which provided her understanding of her devoted husband and Army officer. Many of you in the audience know Major General Page very well and have served with him or for him during his 40 plus year Army career. I wish that I could share with you all of those warm memories and gratitude mailed to us in response to today's ceremony. One letter stood out from Mr. Christian D. Wold, who retired two years ago as Chief Pilot and Director of Flight Test for Grumman Steward Operations. He fondly recalled the first three OV-1 qualified pilots in Fort Hood, Texas, a young captain named Ellis Don Parker, and two enthusiastic lieutenants named Bill Page and Chris Wold. No sooner got their OV-1 school certificates framed than they were out joyfully but controversially operating the Mohawk from solid strips in the maneuver space around the impact area. Major General Page graduated from the second OV-1D class, or correction, second OV-1 class at Fort Rucker, and flew the first Mohawks here at Fort Hood. He completed his first flight in the Mohawk as a co-pilot on 23 June 1962 and qualified in the OV-1 on 10 September 1962. After his first OV-1 assignment here at Fort Hood with the 502nd Aviation Company, 2nd Armored Division, he began one of the greatest adventures in aviation history with the 11th Air Assault Division. He began as a fixed wing air ground instructor pilot, then aircraft maintenance officer at Fort Benning. Then he deployed to 